and we are live. Welcome to Homemaking with Purpose, where we, <clears throat> excuse me, I got a frog in my throat all of a sudden, just at showtime. Who knew? I will start over. Welcome to Homemaking with Purpose, where we bring to you the best ideas, interviews, and information for today's homemaker. On tonight's show, we welcome Michelle, a homemaker and a YouTuber. We'll find out how Michelle manages her home and her YouTube channel while dealing with a chronic illness. But before I bring her on, if we're just meeting, I'm Denise Jordan, and I teach traditional homemaking for today's homemaker. So if that sounds like something that you want to do, then hit that subscribe button and double tap that little bell icon so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And tonight's episode of Homemaking with Purpose is brought to you by Apron Diva, my online apron boutique. Pretty and practical, we believe that an apron can be a homemaker's best accessory. Tonight's featured apron is the Sweet Pea. And this pretty little... And this pretty little pink and green apron would make the perfect gift for upcoming holidays or as a treat for yourself. And for this week only, the Sweet Pea is at 10% off. So you can use the, the discount code SWEET10 at checkout. So you can use the discount code SWEET10 at checkout. So that's our featured apron for tonight. You can see it hanging back there on the door. So, all right, with no further ado, let me get back to our topic of the day and we will get into it. Let me get this banner off the screen and not by putting another banner on. Okay, there we go. And we've got people jumping on. We've got Rachel Knight who said that she um, set her... Reminder, she couldn't wait. And Rachel, I've been thinking about submarine laundry all week. Nancy's saying hello. Jenny is saying hello. Was looking forward to this episode. And then so many other people are chiming in and saying hello. Looking for, uh, hey, they said Michelle is my girl. So all right, Sunday, we are looking forward to that. So let me make sure I got my notes in order and then we will get into it. I've gotten lots of comments from homemakers dealing with anxiety, depression, or some form of chronic illness, and they were looking for help with homekeeping. So tonight's guest, Michelle from My Everyday Wife Life, is the perfect one to have on tonight. And Michelle is just going to give us some ideas as to how she manages her home and Maybe those ideas will help you. Let's welcome Michelle to the platform, ladies and gents. Say hello. hello. <laughs> and one of your folks are here, Michelle. Let's see. Let me find them over here. Um, she says, my Sunday dawn says, Michelle is my girl. So she's here. So she's happy to see everybody here. And I'm just saying, Michelle's going to be amazing. And Jenny says, Michelle is awesome. Hey, Jenny. Melinda from Mimsy Whimsy is here. Melinda says, hey. And Michelle, your people know you. They are saying relax because you got this and you do. You're among friends. Everyone that's on here are people that already knows and loves you. So just relax. Mary Cleveland is on. You know she loves you as well. So we've got lots of people there who are just saying hello. Yay, Michelle. And then Karen is on saying hello. Hey, Karen. And then Ann Allen is also saying hello. So lots of people are jumping on to say hello. So Michelle, hey to you. And I'm so glad you could join us tonight. Thanks for inviting me. You are quite welcome. So Michelle, you've been pretty transparent on your channel about your struggles with fatigue, which sometimes affects your mental health as well as what you're able to do at home. Can you just share briefly, without giving away 
anything that you're uncomfortable to share uh, what chronic illness you deal with and what effect that has on you. Okay, I have Hashimoto's hypothyroidism, which is an autoimmune disease, and it affects your thyroid mostly, and that your thyroid controls a lot of things. <laughs> it controls your energy, it controls your temperature, you can have heat intolerance, mm -hmm. and if you don't have your thyroid levels in check, it can cause depression, anxiety, fatigue, chronic pain, things like fibromyalgia go along with it. Oh my. Yeah, it's, and in 2000, um, in 2012, so I was diagnosed in 2008. In 2012, I was um, diagnosed with thyroid cancer. So oh. sometimes Hashimoto's and thyroid cancer are one, you know, one in the same. Mm -hmm. um, and so I had to have my thyroid removed. So I don't even have a thyroid. So I have to take okay. thyroid medication for life. And it's been hard managing it. It's been a long 10 years or nine years since. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we've got lots of other people jumping on saying hello, but I'm just going to stay focused on you for a minute and then we'll come back to the chat in just a little bit because I promised you I would just try to keep you on for an hour. And so we'll go from there. So now before we get into tonight's Q&A, though, tell me a little bit about your family, like how long you've been married, whether or not you have children or not, and then a little bit about your life as a homemaker. Okay, so um, I've been married for 36 years. This okay, July. congrats. Um, met my husband in high school. Um, okay. And uh, I have one son. He, he lives in San Francisco. He's 34 years old. Okay. So I was an early empty nester because I had okay. him. I think I was 21. So I only had one child. And I have a huge family, and most of them live here. There's like 30 of us. Mm -hmm. My sister has... Um, 16 grandchildren and I am the pseudo grandma Mimi <laughs> she, shares, she shares her grandchildren with me and I just have a huge family and it's yeah really nice to have a big family it is nice to have a big family so okay so you were diagnosed in about 2008 and then 2012 you started to have some more issues right. you've had one child um who is now an adult and so now you're pretty much an empty nester. So were you pretty much an empty nester when your diagnosis came about and you started to have these effects? Yeah, yeah. he he graduated high school in 2006. Mm -hmm. So and I don't might not have the exact dates because, <laughs> you know, brain fog, you don't remember all these details. So, um, yeah, it was about 2008 that I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's. And then um, four years later, I was diagnosed with um, thyroid cancer. Okay. Yeah. And then you said the Hashimoto's and the, the, the whole nine yards affects your energy and your just ability to do some things. And you said sometimes a little fogginess. Yes. Uh, a lot of fogginess. When I had some, um, I had like three bouts of very um, bad depression and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And your brain is not, the neurons are not connecting because you're not getting the, the right thyroid medication. And I happen to be one of those special cases where I had to try four different forms of medicine before I found the right one. And that took nine years to figure that oh, out. My. It was, yeah. A lot of people, most, the most common um, medicine for um, thyroid is Synthroid. And most people do fine on that. Mm -hmm. I just, so it's been a long haul. <laughs> and you know, the funny thing about thyroid is that so many women have what they call hypothyroid or low hypothyroid state, which I have that myself and I take the Synthroid every day and two or three other women in my family take the same. But I guess I'm very lucky, very blessed that it wasn't significant. You know, I don't have a lot of problems with it. And the, the thyroid medication that I take do manage my thyroid needs. Well, I'm good there. Right. Okay. Okay. So I was watching one of your videos on your YouTube channel. And yes, ladies and gents, she does have a YouTube channel. Now let me get that up to share it. Now you guys know I got to walk myself through the um, steps or I will mess it up. And it should be this one. 
So here's Michelle, and here's her YouTube channel. My Everyday Wife Life is her YouTube channel. And one of the things that I noticed, like on this video right here, is that you have Kimmy's planner. So what are your thoughts about that she's in her apron planner? Let's just talk about that real quick. Let me okay, um, I'm liking it. I don't usually use a traditional planner like that. I tried it in the past and it was too overwhelming for me and the mm -hmm. sticker thing and stuff like that. Um, I am a huge list maker, but this seems like it's going to work for me. There's plenty of spaces for me to write lists and I like the weekly layout. It's mm -hmm. all in one place, all your little lists and stuff, mm -hmm. the, the morning routine and the evening routine. Um, so you can track and all that, all that kind of stuff. I think it's going to work out well for me. We'll mm -hmm. see. It's still going to take some time to get used to it and figure out exactly how I want to use it. I like the fact that you said you're a big list maker and you like to make lists. And so you can do that in that one. Yes, there's plenty of more than enough room to make all my lists that I make. So, OK. And then what about the aprons on notepad? What do you think about that? I haven't used it yet. I've got it right here, actually. I haven't used it yet, but I'm thinking that I'll use that um, like on the go instead of taking my planner with me when I run errands. I can just jot down what I have need to do that day when I run errands and, and things like that, I think. That'll okay. Be I've got one, too, and I, silly me, forgot to bring it in here. I brought it upstairs, and I had it in my book bag, and I set the book bag outside the door, and then, of course, I came in, shut the door, and left the book bag outside the door. So the apron divas, I mean, uh, the aprons, she's in her aprons, planner is in that. But I tried using it this week, too, you know, just to kind of work to see how it would work out. I think I'm liking it, too, so... So good. All right. Well, then I have another question for you. I noticed that the clean and decorate theme running through your YouTube channel for the past few weeks. Tell us about that. And I'm going to just bring up just one of your um, videos real quick again. I think you are right there. So when I look here, I see a lot of clean and um declutter running through there so tell us about that particular thing particularly like you've got this going on with karen and d at d loving life i i believe well i finally committed to having a schedule <laughs> so okay. on mondays i'm doing clean and cleaning videos but since it's fall i like to do decorating videos so i made it clean and decorate with me videos for the fall season and then after that i'll go back to Plain clean, although Christmas is coming up, so I'm sure it will be decorate, clean and decorate with me for that too. And on Thursdays, I am doing decluttering. And okay. yeah, and, and Karen is doing that too. Karen has encouraged me to do a schedule. So Mondays and Thursdays are my schedule. And then I might throw in a video here and there after that, but definitely Monday and Thursday. So has that how has that schedule helped you in managing your home? Well, I just started it <laughs> a couple weeks ago, but I am noticing a difference. So I know Mondays I'm going to clean and Thursday I'm going to declutter something. And yeah, it's kept me more on schedule because I'm kind of a fly by the seat of your pants kind of girl. And I don't always keep to my schedule. I have a schedule and I call it my options. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then when I, whenever I do that, is up to me because it depends on my energy too. So mm -hmm. I can't do a s exact set schedule because I might not have the energy that day. So okay, okay, I got you. So one of the other things that I noticed on your channel, you've got a clean. Since you talked about since it's fall, and then you like to get into a clean and decorate. You've got a, a clean and decorate with me challenge coming up on September thirteenth. Tell us about that and what's involved and whether or not we can participate. Yeah, it's an open invite. Anybody can participate. There's some more information on my YouTube community page. You can go there. So it's going to be September 13th at 11 a.m. Uh, you can post your video. And the day before, I will go on the YouTube community page and post the um, playlist. And you can add your video to the playlist. So you just clean your front porch and decorate it for fall and show all the things that go with it. And then add your video to the playlist. And 
hopefully we'll get a lot of views from that. <laughs> okay. Okay. I've done right. that last year too. I did, I believe I did a collab last year for the front porch too. So. Okay. All right. That sounds good. So let me ask you uh, real quick. And if I've already asked this, let me know, but, um, so your weekly, what you've just started, your weekly decluttering series and then the other cleaning schedule, it's just started, but you said you've already noticed a change in your home? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I have noticed a, a change in my home because, I don't know, that's a more set thing. And then my, my schedule without YouTube, I just kind of do it whenever. So, yeah. So YouTube helps you stay on track. Yeah, it does. It has from the start. When I started YouTube six years ago, that is why I started YouTube was for me mm -hmm. <laughs> and to stay on track, to motivate myself, to get up off the couch and clean and not sit and wallow in my own yeah stuff. So it okay. really motivated me to get up and move. And now it's motivating other people, too. So exactly. It's motivating other people. And I think when you say you started yours just to kind of give yourself a focus and kind of help you get up off the sofa. One of the reasons why I started mine too is because I had just retired from my job and I wanted to have something to do every day. I didn't want to just sit on the sofa and watch soap operas. I wanted right. to have something to do and something to offer. So it's certainly been helpful for me as well. And it is a way of accountability too. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So now one of your recent videos told us to work smarter, not harder. And I had, so I had to laugh when I saw you mopping your cabinets. I know. I was like, uh, cabinets? so tell us about how you came up with that idea. Well, I was emptying out my mop one day and I spilt it all down the front of the cabinets mm -hmm. and on the floor. And I'm like, well, the mop is right here. I might as well just use that to wipe the cabinets down best I can. And I'm like, wait a minute, I could use that anywhere in the kitchen. And because I have really tall cabinets and I have to get yeah. it up and down the ladder many mm -hmm. times. And um, yeah, so it worked really well. I have seen other people do, maybe not with a mop, but something like that to mm -hmm. do the cabinets with. And it worked really well. I don't know how well it worked exactly, I guess, <laughs> but I know I will do. I will clean the cabinets more often now. Mm -hmm. It's easier to do. So it looked to me like it worked pretty well. Yeah. And, you and, know. Pretty and, good. and it's the lower cabinets that end up with the grubbiness around the handles, but you can get to those with a with a cloth. Right, so. right. Like that's what I was thinking that I could do that. And I really yeah. like that spin mop. That works really well because it rings the um mop out mm -hmm. really good so it's not dripping wet so works well well since we're talking about that spin mop i was going to ask you about that later but tell me about that i saw you had one and uh darnisha on um that's charming had one and i hadn't seen those before i thought hum so yeah. tell me how you like that mop um i love it <laughs> i've had many mops in my lifetime so mm -hmm. this is the best mop i ever had it's really easy to use like you can it twist it and angle it. So like to every time I mop, I do the baseboards and it's a breeze to do it. It's not a big deal. Usually that was a separate chore to wipe the baseboards down or with a special tool or on your hands and knees. That ain't happening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the, this mop just glides right up along the side of the baseboards every time I mop. And so. Well, and when I saw you mopping your cabinet and you see here the Helpful Home and Helpful Home, what is your name? We like to call each other by names over here. So put your name in the chat so you know what your, well, we know what your your name is. But Heart Hustle Mom, which I believe her name is Candice, she said she loves that. Let's see, where, where'd she go? I, I believe it's Candice. Wait, nope, nope, that's Khadija. She says, um, She's talking to somebody else. Here we go. Hard Hustle Mom, who's Candace, said that she loves a spin mop. She has that old cedar spin mop as well. And I think Khadija might have that mop as well. Tammy says that she likes it. Oh, the Helpful Home says she's actually Sunday Dawn. Okay, so, so we know that her name is Dawn. Okay, cool. And of course, Miss C is here. Hey, Miss Congeniality. Always good to have you with us as well. 
And that mop, the handle shortens. And so you could shorten it so you could get down in the cabinets and stuff. You don't have to have this long stick mm -hmm. thing to use. So Dawn says that your cabinet mopping was legendary. I must admit, I was like, what? Uh, and then I thought, hmm. And so then my first thought was, well, does that mop head come off or whatever? Like, Yeah, you can throw it in the washing machine. I mean, I changed it out and got a new one to use just for the cabinets because I wasn't going to use the one I had um, mopped the floor with. So, but I, you can throw them in the washing machine. That's what I was wondering because I didn't know that. I bought an old cedar mop right now that I'm comparing with the Swiffer, and it too has a mop head that you just take off and throw it in the wash. I was not used to mop heads that you could throw in the wash. Well, typically, most of the time, my husband mops the floor, so the kind of things that he uses is not typically those those little quick like lay like disposal kind that we like to use. So, but I've been mopping the floors lately. Sometimes he's not doing it when I want it done or if I'm in the middle of a process, then I'll just go ahead and just mop it up real quick. But I wanted something lightweight. So I've got the Swiffer and then I got the old Cedar that's kind of like a Swiffer. So I was really, I was like, wow, that little spin mop thing is kind of cool. So I might have to buy that just to give it a try. Okay, let's see what the chat is saying real quick. It looks like there's been a couple people. So Rachel says she's, Thinking of getting a regular mop. She's got a Swiffer, but dirt and sand in Hawaii has nothing on. Oh, okay. So sounds like the dirt and the sand in Hawaii is a little bit more difficult than dirt and sand in other places. So she's struggling with that. Uh, Patricia said she has a spin mop and her sister, she's, she's got to get one. She said her sister loves it. And I thought Khadija had one. She said she likes it. But she doesn't, she's got one, but she doesn't love it. She feels like she needs more abrasion. And, oh, okay, sure. Um, so Barbara says she also has a spin mop. She loves it, and it all, almost makes her want to mop. Barbara, honey, there is nothing that makes me want to mop. <laughs> nothing. Yeah, I but, know. Um, the help home says, can everyone leave a comment afterwards so that we can all find each other's channels? There's new faces here for me. So what she's saying, and I agree, put your put a comment in the comment section below, not in the chat box, but in the comment section below. And then Dawn can go over and look at the the, the faces and the names and she can click on that channel and then go and check them out should she so desire. And then, um, nope. So Rachel says the dirt there stains everything and uh, J J Florida girl or Jack's Florida girl says she loves her spin mop. And when That's she's terrible. Florida, she using it on the cabinet, she had to try it. Uh, did you, did you try it? Her name is Carolyn. Carolyn. Okay. Hi, Carolyn. Oh yeah. You said it worked great. Great. Yeah. She says it worked. Okay. So, oh yeah. And she says right there, her name is Carolyn. So Carolyn, welcome to uh, uh, the, the platform. We appreciate you having it here. And um, Mimsy, her name is Melinda. Mimsy Whimsy is Melinda. She doesn't have a channel, but she does have a book of poetry. She does have that. Oh, Nancy says her husband broke the, her spin mop. Oh, that is too funny. And then um, Khadija's letting, helping her figure out where she might be able to find a replacement. So that's good there. Okay. All right. So let me just see. Uh, So we mentioned the um, the clean and decorate with me porch challenge, and that's September thirteenth. You said that was an open invite. We talked about your Thursday decluttering series helps you to stay on track, and it also helps you to minister to other homemakers as well. Do you know that? Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Because it really kind of helps others to see to stay on track. And when we see you and hear you be so open about struggling with low energy, and then we can think, well, if Michelle can do that, I can try to to get up off the sofa too. Because you're not so. by yourself out there. I hope, I hope that motivates. No, they say they my subscribers say that it does it does motivate them. 
Okay. And one of the other things you always say is working harder, not smarter. One of the things, the ways that I've internalized that is my husband loves rice and he likes that 90 second rice. You know, you get the little, the Uncle Ben's or the Kroger brand and it's like $2.99 for a little pack. So what I've started doing, if I'm going to make rice, I'll make like four cups instead of two cups and then put it in a container in the fridge and then he can get rice out of that. Um, every day for his lunch or whatever or snack and then it's not quite so expensive so it's more cost effective so thank you for sharing that little tip that's what that's what i need to do too so yeah yeah so i've heard you say in several videos sometimes you know sometimes i just don't have enough energy so tell me how that affects your home keeping uh it affects kind of the schedule which i would never really had a schedule because <laughs> let's see so three months after we moved into this house we've been here nine years three months after we moved into this house i found out i had thyroid cancer mm -hmm. so, and the bottom fell out so i never actually found out a, a schedule for cleaning the house because you know when he had just moved here it was double the size of my previous house so mm -hmm. i had never figured that out so um I forgot what I was going to say. So, oh, so, you know, I don't have high energy every day. So um, if I clean every other day, then that seems to help. You know, I can rest the next day or I can go ride my bike because there's no way I can clean and exercise that day. Mm -hmm. So I need to find time for that. And if I need to run errands that day, I, I can't, I can't clean. So, okay. So, cleaning every day i mean i do my five daily chores sometimes <laughs> <laughs> cleaning, the weekly cleaning dusting mopping vacuuming all that is like every other day mm -hmm. so. okay all right well i wonder um let me send a note to mickey blue skies for her to jump on and um get our um pick our person for um the apron note and then we'll get to that so i'm sending her that text message hopefully she'll get it real quick and then um i'm trying to stay on track because you know me i can get the chat 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 and then we end up off track okay so so and I understand when you say some days if you clean, then you can't run errands or bike ride. If you bike ride, then you don't have enough energy to do that stuff. How does it make you feel when you can't get all that done? Frustrated. <laughs> but lately here, I'm not frustrated. Um, so I started my cleaning routine last year when all was in we were all in the lockdown because mm -hmm. what am i going to do but clean <laughs> trapped in the house so little by little i got better and better i gained more energy and stuff and i'm now i'm not as frustrated i am in a good place good my, my depression anxiety is gone because my medicine is working and yeah it's just it's a long process but i think i'm finally there and clear and out of the woods now and I'm not frustrated anymore, but it's baby steps. Mm -hmm. You know, first I would clean for 15 minutes and then go sit on the couch and rest and then get up and clean some more and sit on the couch and rest. And then soon it was 20 minutes and then rest and then, and so on and so on. So, and then play little games. Like I would set a timer and see how much I could get done in 20 minutes and then go take a break and continue. Now I can do my morning routine the whole I don't know how long it takes me I never timed it but I can do the whole morning routine and I'm good <laughs> I'm I, I like the fact that you said it was baby steps and it was a gradual process yeah. and that getting your medication situated or getting it titered properly was a nine-year process that it wasn't something yeah. that just happened overnight so i think it's important that people hear that that it's a process and it does take time uh, to um get to the point where your medication kicks in for you so that you can be in balance because when people struggle with anxiety and depression and that kind of thing it is a problem with 
balance, chemical imbalance in the brain yeah. and body, that kind of thing. And so it is a process. And then the fact that gradually each day you were able to build up your stamina so that you could begin to do a little more and a little more each day. I, I like that. And I'm glad you shared right. that because I know there's someone out there that's thinking, oh, I just need to kind of kind of persevere and just try to do a little bit more each day. Yeah, I used to be um, the mind frame. I'm trying to change it. I still do this sometimes. It's like all or nothing. And I had to change that that mind frame. I can't do all or nothing <laughs> anymore. Mm -hmm. I used to do at my previous house, I used to do a monthly cleaning mm -hmm. and and all day, although I did have help, I had teenagers helping me. And I would spend the entire day cleaning the house from top to bottom. And it kind of reset the house for the whole the whole month. Mm -hmm. I would just have to do touch up. Well, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> Plus the house yeah. is bigger. It's twice the size. And I just, I can't, I can't do that anymore. I'm older. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Because when I do my weekly home blessing on Monday, when I first started with the fly lady system, I could get the whole weekly home blessing done on Monday and move on and do some other stuff. But now sometimes I like, OK, so hun, I got, today is Monday is the weekly home blessing. Can you mop the floors and do the vacuuming? Because I just don't have the energy to get it all done out and do some other stuff. Let's check in with the chat for a minute. We did mention that it was baby steps and we're getting some comments about some of that. And so. um Luann is on. I haven't seen her for a while. And Luann says that Michelle keeps it real. That's why she enjoys your video. Um, Mary Cleveland says she just subbed to your channel. Oh, She's been dealing with cancer and chemo. So you know Mary, don't you? Well, um, she just subbed. I don't think I've ever seen her comment before. She Well, you know what? She's here with us on Thursday night every okay. week. Okay. Well, she just joined your channel, which is good. And because she needs some motivation to deal with the problems that she's dealing with as well. And um, Memzi's trying to figure out a way to tie in her poetry and decluttering. So I'm going to go from there. And then um, Sunday Dawn said, it's good to see you feeling good. And then uh, Caroline says that she's been watching your videos for a while and she can really tell the difference in how you're feeling. So evidently you're starting to glow and your people yeah. can tell. Yeah, yeah. I, I go back and watch my old videos and it's sad. <laughs> well, I'm not feeling taller and like my humor has come back and everything. Also too, I would have to say my husband being home for the last year and a half mm -hmm. has really helped him being here with me all day because he worked from home now has helped but oh good there are, there are other factors in too yeah okay let's see we've got uh gladys is on and she says congratulations on your progress and okay so there we are with that all right well now i'm going to take a break it's time for us to do the Apron note, apron note, it's time for the apron note. All right, so um, Mickey Blue Skies is going to be sending me that any second. So let's see, she just sent me a little text. So let me get the apron note out. So for those of you who are wondering, like, what's she talking about? She's talking about an apron note. Well, one of the things that we do here with Apron Diva is that we put an apron note in every order. And the purpose of the apron note is to remind each of you homemakers just how special you are. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it is our hope that you think of your apron note as a word of encouragement from your dearest friend. And we say you don't choose the note. The note chooses you. We've got like eight or nine different notes. And so each note is randomly selected. And so, Michelle, I've got the note for tonight right here. And the note for tonight says. Overwhelmed, focus on one task at a time. So I'm hoping that that note resonates with you and I'll bet it resonates with someone out there as well. So Mickey Blue Skies is picking the, the viewer who will also get a note. So Michelle, 
I'll send you an April note in the mail. You'll get this note. And then uh, I got a little bing here and it says, it's Khadija from Her Healthy Home is the winner of tonight's April note. So Khadija, you and Michelle will get the overwhelmed, focus on one task as, at a time, April note. So if you want to email me your address, I will send that out and um, let's see, I got, email me at this and that with Denise at gmail.com and then I will send your apron note in the mail to you. All right, so, so you are quite welcome. All right, so let's see if there's any comments we need to, Okay, so Hard Hustle Mom says that we were speaking directly to her. So, and that's the big thing, Candace. You know, when you're overwhelmed, just try to do one thing at a time. Now, Michelle, you were mentioning how you are a good one for making to-do lists. Is there a way that you prioritize on your to-do list so that you try to get what needs to be done, done? Uh, not really. <laughs> um, I, I just make a list. And I know I have had people comment that my list is too long, but I mm -hmm. call them my options. So mm -hmm. I make a list of what I know needs to be done. That doesn't mean I need to do it that day. And then I pick from that list of what I want to do that day, what I feel like doing that day, what definitely needs to be done that day. And then what doesn't get done gets put on tomorrow's list. Okay. So you have an options list. So you make a list of the things that you need to get done. And it can just kind of be a list that goes from one day to the next, because based upon your energy level, right. you may or may not be able to get to it. So Candace, that might be something you might want to think about. And if I'm not, and if I remember correctly, you've also just had a baby recently. So you've got several little ones and then, um, when you've got little ones, especially a new baby, your time is not your own. So make a list of the things that you need to do. And from my perspective, have the top three things at the top of the list, the things that are most things first. Try to get the most important things done and then move on down the list or move them to the next day because you can't get it all done. Right. I've had my grocery shopping on my list since Monday. I have not to the grocery store okay. it, it, we still have enough food to last us so i should be going to the grocery store but we're good it's all okay. right and, and then ginger says you ha you break yours into types calls errands etc you want to tell us about that oh well that is that's my anti-procrastination list so um Ooh. i saw that from the seat Wait, i didn't have that on the list no, you didn't. I guess I should have said something to you. So I heard about that from the secret slob. She mm -hmm. does fly lady. I did not fly lady. fly lady thing. So I started doing like anti procrastination videos. In fact, I have the the free printable right here. So I do this um, things that I have from procrastinating. I am an avid. <laughs> that's not even the right word. Procrastinator. Um. Yeah. Like people. I have have this panel in my bathroom that mm -hmm. came off the front panel. It's been like that for three years. <laughs> and so that's on my procrastination list. But I, what do you want to say? Prioritize that. Like, it's not on my priority list. I know it needs to be done. But now I have to have the anti-procrastination list. And I'm starting to get things done by making a list, a separate list like this. And kind of making like a game of it. Asking my subscribers to join in. And yeah, it's helping. Well, um, that's different from your 15 minute declutter checklist. Yeah, that is, um, was to encourage people to do like a 15 minute declutter, like because that started from Minimal Mom, where she mm -hmm. had done that video. You did that video, right? Yes. Um, to prepare them for the one box challenge that's coming up on September 30th. Mm -hmm. So, um, I was given them um, tasks to do that um, would only take like 15 minutes. You don't have to clean your whole kitchen. Just do a silverware drawer. Just do just the mugs, just the glasses, just the baker. You don't have to do the whole cupboard. Okay. Like that. that only take 15 minutes. 
And that's certainly something that could prove to be very helpful for a homemaker that's struggling with fatigue or low energy levels or even depression or anxiety. So if they could put on their list for today that I'm just going to take 15 minutes to declutter my mugs, they can see progress and then be excited right. when they finish that one task. Exactly what you just said. You can see progress. Okay. If you try to declutter your whole closet, you're not going to get it all done very quickly and you're not going to see progress. But if you just do your shirts, just declutter your shirts, then mm -hmm. you can see the progress with that quickly. Okay. So now I put the link to that particular printable that I just had up on the screen in the description box. So you guys can go to Michelle's link and get it. But now what about the anti-procrastination list? How can they get that one? Uh, usually I list that in um, the description of my video. I list different ones. I have a ton of printables. So okay. I list different ones. Um, today's video, the decluttering video, I also talked about a few anti-procrastination tasks that I took care of, renewed my driver's license, put renewed my tags since it's my birthday month. Mm -hmm. And um, I put the link to the that printable in the description. I always list some in every video. Different I'll find for the chat. I will find the link for today's video. You said yes to the, for my decluttering video today. It's okay. In, I'll find the link to that printable and I'll put it in the description box too so you guys can find it or go to Michelle's channel and click on it and then it'll take you to it so that you can uh, find that and you can get access to that as well. Okay. Um, so tell me about your daily, weekly zone cleaning routines. It's not quite like the fly lady, but it's an awful lot like the fly lady because you do do zones, but they're a little bit different. Right. You kind of tweak them to make them work for you. So you want to tell us about that? Well, I felt like Fly Lady was too complicated for me. Mm -hmm. And again, what I was talking about before, when we were on lockdown last year, I was went, my house needed clean because I had been in a deep depression for the last year and a half prior to that and started mm -hmm. coming out of it in January. So, you know, I needed to clean my house from top to bottom. So I noticed I was clean as in a pattern. I would clean a third of the section of the house and then the next day I would clean another third and another third. So I divided my house into three zones. I know that seems like a lot to mm -hmm. have three zones. That's just the way I like to clean. I like to clean zone one and be done and not have to worry about it till next week. Okay. And then zone two and not have to worry about it till the next week except for touch up. And zone three, the same thing. I just, that's just how my brain works. I just like to do it that way rather than to work on one zone a week. Mm -hmm. I like that I have touched every zone throughout the week. Okay. And I know there are several people that are like that. Nikki at Inspired by Nikki, she has tweaked the system to make it work for her too. And she said she likes having touched every place in her house that way. Yeah. yeah. So she tweaked it a bit too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, let me just say while we're talking about your printables and that kind of thing, if you guys are not subscribed to Michelle, please go over to her channel and do subscribe because she's got all these great printables that are available for you that you can access and use free of charge. So just go ahead and, and join her family and um, there will be more uh, printables that you can find that are useful for you. Okay. So one of the things that I really like about your channel, Michelle, is that you keep it real. Uh, and I think it was a Sunday dawn that said that earlier. They said you keep it real. And for example, your kitchen is not always interest perfect. I mean, you will just, there have been times when you have called it a hot mess yourself. Right. And then you would uh, work on it. So tell me what you do to keep it from being overwhelming. Well, I didn't always, it was a lot, most of the time it was overwhelming. So uh, to me, the kitchen is the, is the most important over like making the bed. Cause everybody's the whole making the bed thing. You need to do that. Well, I needed to clean my kitchen cause it's the hub of the home. Mm -hmm. So if I looked at the big picture, it was overwhelming. So recently, actually, 
I started looking at it in sections, like by the dishwasher and the counter above the dishwasher. I cleaned that space up completely before touching mm -hmm. any other place in the kitchen. And then that space was clean. And then I was motivated to do the next space because if you just kind of grabbed here and there, what it, no space got clean completely. And it wasn't motivating you to move on to the next place. You're like, I've, I just, I just cleaned for 15 minutes and it still looks a mess. So this mm -hmm. way it doesn't look like a mess. So you, it sounds like you divide, di divided your kitchen into zones. I guess so. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like you did. Like you created zones in your kitchen and you moved from one space or one zone right. to another, but you were able to get it done and see some progress. You know, as 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 we talk about this, <clears throat> excuse me, there's Dana from A Slob Comes Clean. And she talks about one hour better. And what she calls it is where you work in a space and you just work in it for one hour and you leave it better than what it was, even if it's not completely done. And she says, you start with the trash, get rid of all of that, and then start putting things where they go. And even if you don't finish it, it looks better than how it was when you started it. So I can certainly see where if you start with one corner of the kitchen and then get that cleared up and then you move to another spot in the kitchen, you can certainly see like going through each of the areas, how it's yeah. You get that wow factor. <laughs> like, wow, that looks so much better. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. If you just kept going around in circles and picking up a dish here and a dish here, you're not going to get that wow factor. I like that idea, the wow factor. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Okay. So in one of your videos, you talked about sometimes feeling overwhelmed. So how do you deal with overwhelm? So many of us struggle with that. And I know sometimes I'll just find myself, you know, I'll just be like, like this, because I'm overwhelmed, or I'll be, you know, like my husband knows when I'm getting kind of nervous, because I'll be doing this. And, you know, I'm getting a little anxious. And I just get so many things that I have to do especially at one time. So how do you deal with overwhelm? Well, several different ways, but definitely better here recently this year. But in the past, honestly, if I got overwhelmed, I would take a nap. Oh. And then I felt better when I, when I got up because instead Recharge. of, yes, I just like, I just need to go take a nap. But then I started doing decluttering challenges on my channel and breaking it down into smaller um, things. Like last year I did, was that last year? I did clean your drawers challenge. We did uh, one drawer a day. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that is so simple. Instead of thinking I have to clean my whole kitchen desk and all the drawers in it, the top, all this paperwork and stuff. I just said, let's just do one drawer a day. It took like 15 minutes. And mm -hmm. I went around my house and counted. I have 90 drawers. <laughs> That's crazy. Yes. Mm -hmm. all, I'm talking about all the drawers everywhere. So we did. I did 30 drawers. Boom. That was done in one month. 30 drawers. And that was awesome. And definitely a wow factor there for sure. And kept each time we did a drawer, we would be encouraged to keep doing more and more. Okay. So something... So it sounds like people are liking your anti-procrastination month because Ginger says she declared September to be anti-procrastination month. I'm not sure what yeah. she chose to do with it, but then I got Mimsy down here saying, can I get in on that anti-procrastination month? So is there something you got going on with that? Well, that's Ginger. <laughs> she decided she was going to do that. But in my, I just decided today in my decluttering videos, I happen to be, that's posted on Thursday. I happen to be posting or filming it on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be doing my anti-procrastination tax on Wednesday. So I'll declutter and I'll add what those tasks were. Like today um, was I renewed my driver's license. I renewed the tags. I cleaned my craft room today. So I could be in this video <laughs> with the <laughs> You know what I mean? And so, yeah, and I have been procrastinating all of those things. So, um, yeah, so they all have been following me with the anti-procrastination. I'm going to be posting on my YouTube um, community page every Wednesday. I'm not going to do a specific video, but there's the printable. I have done 
specific videos just for anti-procrastination, but I'm just going to include them in my decluttering video on Thursday. You know, I kind of like that idea. And when you think about the tasks that you just mentioned for anti-procrastination, some of those are things that I wouldn't normally think about putting on my planner or putting in my list of things that I'm doing around the house. But there are things that need to get done. You got to right. renew your driver's license. You got to get your new tags. There are different things like that you got to do. And it is so smart of you to actually include that on the list because there are things that we do procrastinate with that's huge. Yeah, because yeah. I've had things like that bite me in the butt where I've not, I procrastinated way too long. Mm -hmm. and it's past the date well it wasn't this particular thing but for instance your driver's license and you went past the date after it expired and now what you what are you going to do I, exactly you can't drive to go pick it up i know i haven't done that particular thing but you know what i'm talking about and yeah there's many times it's bite me in the butt there so i'm okay. trying to stop doing that so do you write that anti-procrastination those tasks in a certain place to help you remember them on my list <laughs> oh, you put them on your list. On this anti procrastination checklist here. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the one. Let me write that down, but I got to get that one the anti procrastination checklist. But now, there, I believe there's a spot in the planner to do that too. Maybe. I don't know. I need to find a spot to do that in, in the planner. So I well, just need to have a piece of paper like this was a long time ago i would just i have lots of clipboards and lots of lists so i would just write all these things that i need to take care of that are important and check them off as i go and you feel such a sense of accomplishment when you get that done yeah, yeah absolutely okay and Amber is sending you a message. She says, setting that timer for 15 minutes, those small bits of times add up. And yeah. I love the idea of the drawer. I remember when you did that series and somebody else said they remembered that series as well, too. Also, too, the end of procrastination task, I forget. <laughs> so if I don't write it down, I will forget that I need to do these things. So okay. it's not just that I'm procrastinating. Them, which I do, but I forgot, forget that I'm supposed to do these things. So that helps. I keep feeling like there's something on me. <laughs> like, is there a bug or something? But it's like anything. I don't, yeah, I'm like, what? Maybe it's just, I don't know. I don't see anything. And I, you know, I'm like, what is that? But who knows? You probably like, what is wrong with her? <laughs> I keep feeling like there is something on me. Okay. So let's see what the chat is saying. So um, Ginger says, inspired by Michelle, she's got she's got a list of, of procrastinated tasks and her goal is to knock them out this month. So that's good. And then um, let's see. And then Mimsy likes, um, Tammy likes the idea uh, about the list as well. She said it, she seems to always start in the kitchen. Yeah, and, I um, when I clean, I start in the kitchen because that's the most satisfying. That's where I'm at most of the time. Yeah. yeah. I do that as well. And the most satisfying to have that clean. Yes, because it's right out there in the open and everyone yes. can see it. Anyone coming yes. in can see it as well. So I like that idea. Okay. Um, so your Thursday series now is going to include your anti-procrastination task as well. Oh, I yeah. like that idea. And another thing you did that I really enjoyed, I really enjoyed your August Healthy Habits Challenge. What prompted that challenge? Um, I need to push the reset button. <laughs> okay. So I have been, had been, I have to eat gluten-free because of my autoimmune disease. It makes me gluten intolerant. Mm -hmm. um, it causes inflammation, which causes chronic pain. Anyway, I have fell off the wagon, so I need to reset. And it was a nice month to get back on track with the things that I had already been doing but lost my way. And i actually been doing that the last three years on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to just push that reset button to get you back to clean eating and eating healthy and all those things that I should be doing. Okay. I like that whole idea. And actually we've been trying to do that too. I think I shared a couple of weeks ago that my husband's doctor said that his blood sugar was up. Now doesn't have diabetes. 
and it's not in a dangerous range, but he said it was higher than it normally is. And he wants it back down. So we've been trying to eat healthier as well. So there's that. So how has your August Healthy Habits Challenge, um, how has that helped you as a homemaker? Uh, I have more energy. <laughs> I have, yeah, sent, that was a month, that was all of August, and I am feeling really good. And people have been commenting too, because I won't say it was completely gluten-free in the month of August, but people were saying my face looks slimmer because when I eat gluten, it shows in my face. Oh. I just, and my hands swell and my feet swell and ankles swell. And yeah, so uh, I definitely feel better because I don't have that swelliness anymore. Well, mm -hmm. as much. And that is means less pain. Less pain means more energy because Pain sucks the <laughs> energy. Yeah, out. yeah. So yeah, I definitely have to eat better in order to feel better. And I've been riding my bike and uh, exercising more, and I definitely mm -hmm. have more daily energy than I was having. Okay. Prior to so the August Healthy Habits Challenge was helpful. Are you going to do another Healthy Habits Challenge before the end of the year, or it'll, will it come back around in August? Yeah, come back around in August. Although I have contemplated maybe doing one in February. Maybe. Okay. Okay. You, know, you often fall off, especially with the holidays coming up. You need a reset. Are you going to do something that we can all jump in on as well? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I, I, I did for August people. I have a tracker to track your, I don't have it on, on me right now, but I had a, a healthy habits tracker for the free printables and people were joining in. I have a clean eating page on Facebook and Ginger and some other people that you've seen comment and Barbara were all in there um, sharing what they ate for the day. Oh, okay. Encourage each other and all that kind of thing. Okay. Well, looks like we got a comment from Growing with Hudson who said that um, just stopping by to show some love, have a great evening. And then... Um, Mimsy says, do you talk about your gluten-free diet and how you deal with health issues on your channel? Yes, I, yes, I do. Uh, not a huge amount, but yes, I, I talk about that, especially if I'm cooking or something. Um, and I try, I don't do separate cooking videos, mm -hmm. but I do, if I do a day in a life, I will cook and show what I ate and talk about uh, eating gluten-free and that kind of thing. What makes up a gluten-free diet? Like, uh, what kind of things do you avoid if you're doing gluten free? Bread, biscuits, rolls, English muffins. How can you uh, not eat those things? I do, and I shouldn't because then I suffer. <laughs> it really sometimes instantly drains me. Mm -hmm. It depends what it is. If I eat McDonald's, I instantly feel just oh. yeah i feel really exhausted like the really white like white bread white biscuits that really bothers me if i eat a whole wheat bread that doesn't bother me as much but it still it still bothers me pasta i have gluten-free pasta um those kind of things okay all right and then we've got uh, Mary's from Mary's Call for Journal. She says uh, a journey. She says you've been such an inspiration to her and she just loves you. Hi, Mary. So that's good. It's really nice to know that you are helping people, Michelle, with what you share because you're inspiring people to put one foot in front of the other. And that is so nice to know that you're encouraging others. It is nice to know because they they encourage me to keep going. Okay. Knowing right. that they're watching is, yeah, making me be able to keep going. So Caroline says she likes watching you cook. I did a lot of cooking last month <laughs> in my videos. And Candace is enjoying tonight, too. She says the chat is fantastic. So thank you, Michelle, for helping make the chat fantastic. And... Oh, and her reward is being able to just sit here and watch. Hey, Nanny, good to have you with us. She says she's got her task all done. She's showered and she's got she's got her bedtime routine all done. So now she's rewarding herself by sitting here chatting with us. Welcome, Nanny. Uh, Jean, glad you're here. Let's see. 
Khadija says, get rid of wheat. She said, that'll help. Get rid of the wheat to be gluten free. Yes, it it is. It's the wheat that has the gluten, but most of those things that I said have um, wheat in it. Mm -hmm. Pink flour, anything made with flour, wheat flour is mm -hmm. has gluten. Okay, and then Blue Sky says at one time she thought she had a gluten allergy, but it's not. She's got irritable bowel syndrome, so even with that, she's got to watch what she eats. Yeah, that can be you know pretty difficult as well. I, I thought, um, I've heard that irritable bowel syndrome um, benefits from gluten free, but I could be wrong. But you saying you don't have a gluten allergy, so that's yeah. Good. She said she didn't have a gluten allergy, but you just said it could benefit from eating that way. Right. Right. Okay. That's what I've heard. Okay. And then Khadija said there's so many flowers made that you can make that doesn't have, I guess, the wheat flour in it. Right. Coconut flour. Haven't tried that yet. Let's see. For most things that you buy at the store have mm -hmm. wheat flour. Okay. Mimsy says gluten-free foods make her sick. Whole wheat makes her sick. Hmm. That's interesting. There's got to be something going on different with that. I think there's probably different, maybe different levels like mm -hmm. uh, if you're celiac you definitely cannot have um whole wheat bread either mm -hmm. so but i do eat it occasionally and then blue sky said she's tried keto bread but she didn't like it tasted like cardboard yeah, yeah i agree <laughs> and then again you're just being told how inspirational you are okay let's see So Terry says um, she's also gluten free, and it's amazing. There's even that there's gluten in taco seasoning. Yeah, there's a gluten in um, cosmetics. Really? You yeah. know, I guess since I don't have a problem with gluten, I never thought about what yeah. might be in it. Yeah, I I don't worry about the gluten in cosmetics and stuff like that. That's I don't seem to be affected by that. Although I might be and just don't know it, but I don't, I don't really, I think it's the major, the major white flower products that bother me. Okay. Okay. And then uh, blue sky said she bought some coconut and oat flour, but she hasn't made anything with them yet. So it's something she's got to work on. Mimsy said she also has irritable bowels. So she has some, some things to talk about in regards to that. And then Candace says, breads and rolls are her weakness. Mine too. Oh, I love bread and butter, donuts, that kind of thing. Which is why I've gained weight. Here's something I want to say about gluten-free. So I don't know how many years ago, let's say 10 years ago, the whole being gluten-free was like a thing, a trend yeah. and a fad or whatever. It's not a fad, but everybody wanted to do it. The thing is not everyone needs to be gluten-free, but people started becoming gluten-free and they started feeling better because mm. they're not eating processed foods. So most processed foods have Boom. flour in it. So that's why. So, uh, and they're just, so they're not eating processed foods. They're not eating wheat flour, but mostly it's the processed foods. So just stop eating processed foods. <laughs> Or I do 75, 25, like I try to do 75% clean and then 25% I wave my hand at so I can do a little cheat. <laughs> so now when you say clean and processed, you're going to have to explain that because some people are probably saying, well, what is processed and what's clean? So can you help us with that? Uh, clean is um, eating foods that are in their natural state as closest to their natural state as you can. So fruits and vegetables, raw fruits and vegetables, you can cook them obviously, raw is better, just fresh. So mm -hmm. anything in a box is, you know. Processed. Processed. So. Okay. Part of what it has so, read the back, read the ingredients label on the processed foods. You're not even gonna be able to pronounce some of those things. <laughs> They're so bad for you. And oh, yes. sodium and everything else. What's the name of your Facebook group? People want to know that. Um, it's, uh, what is it? Clean eating my clean eating with my everyday wife life or my everyday wife. It's my everyday wife life, clean eating. The link should be on in my videos. So. Okay. Is 
Is that the one she wants? Because I also have a decluttering page too. <laughs> no, she, they were asking about your clean eating. Um, yeah. My I like thought was the Facebook group was for the clean eating. Yeah. But um, you said you have one or two Facebook groups. I have four. <laughs> I, I have one, one, and then I have one that's called Walk Water Sunshine for mm -hmm. uh, walking challenges. Mm -hmm. And I know I want to go crazy. I probably don't need all those, but anyway. And then my regular my everyday wife life page. <laughs> okay. And then Candace says, stop at the, and when you're at the grocery store, shop at the outer ends of the store and stay out of the middle where all the processed right. foods are. That's probably true right. as well. Right. I forgot then, I read this one time, but I, it must have been in a, a book or something. But what she said was, the person that wrote the book was, you know, the cart where you put the, your kid at, the front part of the cart. Mm -hmm. She said, put all of your junk processed foods there. And then the rest of the cart should be good food. So that's your 75, 25. So you cannot bring home more than will fit in the, the front part of the cart. Oh, what a great idea. So, yeah. So then you'll have to like nickel and dime everything and say, well, that's plenty processed foods. I don't need the rest of it's good food and you're good to go. That's a great idea. I, I like that thought. I really like that thought. And speaking of processed foods, Mary from Mary's Nest is going to be on in a couple of weeks. And she's going to talk about traditional foods and, and the traditional foods kitchen and all of that. So that'll be kind of interesting to hear some of the things that she has to say. Okay. Uh, let's see. There was another question. Um, Mimsy says uh, she was, who is Melinda, said she was diagnosed with possible celiac disease many years ago. And she ate gluten-free not the gluten-free food you can buy now, but just natural for 12 years and yeah. she got better. So now the doctors think that maybe it was irritable bowel syndrome. Okay. Yeah. So you're getting Facebook requests, Michelle. Uh -huh. Hey, Carol. Carol jumped on. She says, so where do you put your kid? Well, if you're like me, you don't have to worry about putting the kid up there. I usually put my purse up where the kid sits. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, what is she talking about? I get it now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah, that's where my first goes to. <laughs> so tell us about the One Box Challenge coming up and how we can participate. Okay, the One Box Challenge is on September 30th. So um, you can go around your, the idea is to go around your house and find things that you want to declutter and donate and put them in the box. You can show your process or you can just show what is in your box. I'm just going to show what's in my box because I do something called casual decluttering besides the little projects that I do. So that means I just when I'm cleaning, mm -hmm. if I put it away, I'm like, you know what? I don't need that anymore. So I'm not cleaning out a whole cabinet, but I'm like, oh, I don't need that anymore. Or if I find holy socks in the wash, <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm going to put those in the donation. Well, not donate, but they're being decluttered um, and they will go in the trash. So, and then at the end of the month, my box is full and I take it to Goodwill. It's something I actually been doing way before YouTube. I always had a box in the garage mm -hmm. and that random type decluttering, casual decluttering. Whenever I saw something, I put it in the box and the box got full. I took it to Goodwill. That's kind of what I've been doing too. I'm working on the Swedish death cleaning. And so as I go through and find something, I'm, the things that I'm putting in the box for the one box challenge, I'm just putting them in there. So some of it I've shown the process of me putting it in there, but some of it I just put in the box and you yeah. might just see the collection of boxes because I thought I can't drag the camera out every time I find. Oh, right. I, I know that's me too. So just go to my, again, my YouTube um, community page and the info for the challenge will be there. Again, I will put the playlist there the day before the um, challenge goes live, and then you can add it to, to the playlist, and you have to mention my channel and the playlist and all those things. The rules will be there on my channel. What kind of things do we put in the box? Uh, whatever you want. <laughs> and anything counts, because I talked about that in my decluttering video. So I decluttered um, a lot of shampoos and conditioners and cleaners. I condensed the bottles and I had a huge basket of empties. Now mm -hmm. people would say, well, that's garbage. Well, yes it is, but it's been sitting in your cabinet for how long? Mm -hmm. Mine for like a year because the last time I cleaned that out. So it's, it's clutter. That counts. Put that in your box too. Whatever fills up your box. Well, you put that in your box or you can put that in a trash box. That's one yeah. of the things that Dana at um, 
um, the, a, a slob comes clean says, she says, get rid of the trash first. And that may be the most obvious, but it does help right. to declutter the area. So right. you could show a trash box too, or right. like show yourself taking them out of the cabinet and dumping them in the right. trash or whatever. But, but yeah, so you put them in the box and say, this is going to go in the trash and this is going to be donated. So but that anything you know. counts for decluttering. Anything counts. If it's leaving your house, it counts. Yes, it does. Um, so Jenny wants to know, what's the best decluttering homemaking book you've ever read? I don't read. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm not a reader. I don't, mm -hmm. I, I don't think I've ever had read a decluttering or homemaking book. Well, whatever. I've been reading the Sweeties Death Cleaning books, and which has been very interesting. So I've got that one. And then I've been looking at articles. I've been looking at lots of videos about decluttering. And I've been looking at a lot of them by Dawn at the Minimal Mom. Um, she does a lot of really good ones, but I'll find a good decluttering one and put it in the um, description box. The best homemaking and homekeeping book I like is I like the Martha Stewart book and I like, um, oh, I can't think of the other woman's name, but I'll put them in the links in the description box. I didn't think someone would ask that question or I would have had the books right here for show and tell, but they're downstairs in my cookbook cabinet, but I'll put those in um in the description box after tonight. No, I did read this book. <laughs> oh, the Eat this Clean my, Diet. Tell us about yes. that. I I bought this probably like 15 years ago. It's an old book. She has a newer version now. But this is kind of what got me started. Actually, my sister started eating clean, and then I needed a book for inspiration. It is awesome. Lots of nice pictures. It has meal ideas. Okay. You can get this on Amazon. Anyway, these are the kinds of books that I read like that and mm -hmm. stuff. And it, it, I actually, I think this is the book that said that tip about um, putting your junk food on the front of the cart, and then the rest of the cart should be oh. good. I'm pretty sure that this was. It was inspired me to eat more clean for sure. So, who's that by the Eat Clean Diet? Yes, it's Tosca Reno, T O S C A. Reno, R-E-N-O. Okay, I got it. I'll drop that link for you. And then um, Nancy says she wants to see more videos on the Swedish death cleaning. I'll, I'll do work on some more videos on that. I've just kind of been gradually working through it. Um, I should read that book. I'm thinking. It's you very know, interesting. I did read part of KonMari, and then I gave up on that. Yeah, and I gave up on that, too. <laughs> I tried that. I got all that stuff out and I was so overwhelmed and then everything yeah. was out and I just threw it back in the closet. Oh, it, it just wasn't a good, it wasn't a good look. Right. Carol said she's uh, does some casual decluttering though for most of her home, but not all of it. I, I kind of like that idea too, for it to be a continual, yeah, a continual process. Exactly. And then, uh, you definitely still need to do projects where you need to clean under the sink or, or your closet and stuff like that. But, you should be thinking about decluttering every day. Yes. You know, just just when you're going around the house. Don't wait. Don't wait to do a project to get rid of it. Get rid of the single items now. Okay. And then Cal said she's finally got her bedroom clean. She's been working on that. A gradual decluttering process. So good. So now Jenny Smith says for her, the best decluttering book has been Dana K. White's. And that's who I'm talking about when I say Dana at a slob comes clean. She's done two books, one called Declutter at the Speed of Life. And the other one is Just a Slob Comes Clean. And she's got some great ideas on decluttering. She's also got a great YouTube channel as well. Um, Jenny says, cl clear your clutter with Feng Shui. Um, there's that. Fly Lady Marla also has some books. And okay, somebody named Stephanie just joined us. I'm not sure who, but okay. Um, all right. So um, oh, someone said you're also doing the self-care September, and I lost there. Yeah. I do that every the last couple of Septembers because one, it's my birthday month, so it's mm -hmm. So I tried to do, I, I think Oprah had said this one time that you should make your mammogram, your gynecologist appointments around your birthday. So you'll remember to do that and remember mm. when was the last time you do that. So uh, I'm going to make a mammogram appointment. I've already done the other ones. So um, 
yeah, it's my birthday month and self care September. It's actually National Self Care Month, actually. Really? Yes, it is. I didn't realize that until last year. September is National um, Self Care Month, so I'm gonna do all the things: get a pedicure, get my hair cut, go for a walk on the beach. Well, all those things people could put in their planner on their birthday month or National September for Self Care Month. I like it. Well, we've had someone jump on, and I don't know what they're saying, so I'm sorry about that. Um, oh, Stephanie's on. Stephanie said she always done her her does her test in February. All right, so Michelle, um, what are your top three decluttering tips? Uh, <laughs> I was going to say for that. Um, one is to make it a game. Well, first is to just start. Just start. Just start with one thing and you will build on that. You get one thing done and you will want to keep going. Two is to make it a game. Like I started doing the, the challenges on YouTube. The like the declutter your drawers challenge. That motivated me to get stuff done. I did 30 bags in 30 days with Sophia, my great challenge. That was a good challenge to do. We did declutter a bag a day. I have when I make things a game, it's more interesting. So I like that I did make it a game. And stuff. So um, and the other one is mm -hmm. if you're overwhelmed to stop, go take a nap. <laughs> And start again the next day. It'll be there when you come back. Don't stress yourself up. I remember when doing 30 bags in 30 ba uh, days, the paperwork overwhelmed me badly, which I was starting to fall down into a depression at that time. Mm -hmm. And that's probably why. And I said, I can't do this. I'm done. And yeah, to push yourself and make you go further <laughs> from yourself. Mm -hmm. make yourself worse you have to just stop and say i can start tomorrow i can start next week it'll still be there right <laughs> the sky isn't gonna fall down if you don't do it it's fine go take a nap whatever you need to do don't I push like that. that much i like that just don't put too much stress on yourself i like that okay well now it's time for the lightning round uh oh you ready <laughs> sure Okay, let me get this off the screen, first of all. Uh, there, okay. All right, coffee or tea? Coffee. Bath or shower? Shower. Bike ride or walk in the park? Bike ride. Jeopardy or Wheel of Fortune? Jeopardy. Lavender or peppermint? Peppermint, I hate lavender. Oh, really? I love it. I like the plant, but I don't like the essential oils or products with it in there, but I love the lavender plant. I don't know. Okay. Cats or dogs? Cats, of course. All right. I figured it were Hobbs and Calvin and the Hobbs. Yes, Calvin and Hobbs and Kirby, who's 18 years old. Oh, you've got a three yeah. now. Uh, yeah, you hardly see him because he's 18 years old. He's sleeping. Okay time okay well all right then well michelle i want to thank you so much for um joining us tonight and uh i've kept you on longer than i intended so um i am going to um do the happy mail real quick i have one so we'll be wrapping this up oh and look she's got a cute little stamp on the back i gotta get some of that you know where you can put the little seal and stamp it but this is the thank you from Rachel Knight. And she's thanking me for the lovely Christmas plate. So she got one, one of the gifts for the uh, Christmas in July. So she's sending me a thank you card for that. So thank you for that. I appreciate that, Rachel. So that's my happy mail for today. And then um, my question of the day is, ladies and gentlemen, what is your takeaway? What are you taking away from the tips that Michelle has shared with us that you can implement in your home, particularly if you are struggling with a chronic illness? What have you uh, taken away from Michelle? If you're on the replay, put it in the comments section. And for those of you on the chat, drop it in the chat, but do me a favor and copy and paste it in the comment section too. That would really help me out. So what's your takeaway? And Michelle, what do you want them to take away from today? Oh, goodness. 
Well, what I wanted to say was that I'm doing really good right now and it may look that like I'm I'm fine, which I am right now. I'm mm -hmm. I'm doing really good. But for me or for anyone else that suffers with depression, anxiety, that kind of thing, you're not seeing them when they're bad. So all those times I wasn't making a video, I wasn't showing that because I was on the couch for three days. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that. So, you know, people have said, not nobody here, <laughs> people in my past, have said, well, you don't look sick. Well, what exactly does, I'm not bleeding on my arm here. You can't see that, but I'm bleeding on the inside and you can't see that. And I'm not, you're, when you see a person who's depressed and has anxiety, they're having a good day. So that's why they don't look sick. Mm -hmm. They don't look like they're depressed. So when you see me running around doing all these cleaning and stuff, I'm having a good day. I'm having a good day. I have bad days too. You're just not. You're just not seeing that. I'm definitely having more better days than I used to. Mm -hmm. I had some really dark days where I was on the couch or in the bed for days and not doing anything until I had no underwear to wear and I had to do the laundry. And I had to get up and do that. Okay. Otherwise, yeah. So Michelle, thank you for that. Because I, I I think that's an that's probably the most important thing you've said this entire show, because what we see is the Pinterest perfect or the Pinterest view. We don't see the day to day uh, what goes on in different people's lives. We just see that Instagram or that Pinterest or the YouTube moment. And whereas you keep it pretty real on the days when it's really bad, you can't get off the sofa. So you don't show those days. Right. You are good about saying no video today because I couldn't get to it. You're good about right. that. But I like the fact that you're keeping it real. So thank you so much for that. And one of the things that someone in here just said, um, be kind to yourself and have, and this was a good interview. I've been saying that a lot to different people lately to be kinder to yourself. Sometimes we are not kind to ourselves. And it's either the choices we make regarding food, regarding activity, maybe regarding people, that kind of thing. I've been just saying, be kinder to yourself. And I've been trying to do that too. I told my husband the other day, I said, "Hun, the next time I ask you to take me to Dairy Queen, remind me how I feel after I've eaten that ice cream. Because I'm like, I like to go to Dairy Queen for a pecan mudslide and I'm just all excited to go. But then after I've eaten it about an hour or so later, I just feel like, why did I eat that? You know, but when I'm thinking about it and it's going down, it tastes great, but it's not kind to me later. So I'm trying to remind myself and others to be kind to themselves. So Ginger, thank you for that reminder. And Michelle, thank you too for being so transparent. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And let's see. Mary said, it's been a wonderful evening. So if, like I said, if you're here in the replay, drop in the comment section what your aha moment was. And for those of you that are here live, again, put in the chat what your aha moment was or put it in the comment section as well. I want to invite you guys back to, to my last video, my zone four master bedroom uh, cleaning video or my kitchen vignette video, the fall kitchen vignette. And then be sure to visit our sponsor, Apron Diva. The link is in the description box. And then, of course, our featured apron for tonight, the Sweet Pea. Be sure to check that out. And in the meantime, this is Denise Jordan saying you're not done yet. Click on the link in the description box to check out another of my homemaking stories. And I will see you guys next time. And Michelle, I'm going to you stick around. I'll see you for a second. And everybody else is saying it's been a good evening. So, ladies, thank you so much for jumping on. And we'll see you next time. Bye.